How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Omar Wale, Day Wale. Uh, you refer to me as Wale. Uh, I'm not gonna take too much time because um, it's so cool out here. It feels great. Um, so, I'm just going to really discuss a little bit about what's in my book, and um, I have a book that's called uh, An Introduction to Veganism and Agricultural Globalism, kind of break that down for a lot of the folks uh, who may be interested in going vegan. First off, how many people in the crowd are not vegan? Raise your hand if you're not vegan. Okay, so everybody is vegan, so why are we having this event? Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, the people who are not vegan can actually hear me. Thank you. All right. Um, so what my book tends to go into in terms of veganism is to really give you an idea why it makes total sense to, uh, to be vegan. Um, ethical sense, um, health sense, uh, sense in terms of uh, the environment, right? Um, but it also looks at uh, agricultural globalism. So to kind of break that down uh, a little bit, obviously in agriculture in terms of farming, producing uh, food that we eat, all right? Uh, globalism in terms of um, the shrinking of um, our economic and our social system uh, politically. Uh, so when we look at these particular terms, agricultural globalism, and we look at veganism, the food that's growing, growing around the world, how do we get certain food it's coming from certain places or around the world, right? Um, so I want to give one example. And since I don't want to be too long, let me give one of the biggest examples that I do have uh, in terms of uh, GMOs, right? So a lot of the foods, even when we are vegan, we get a lot of the foods that are GMOs and how to, that food that's produced, that's also produced by, be honest, animals are helping to produce that food, right? Can we be honest with that? Right. Uh, so essentially when we live in this type of globalism, we have to really push and put more engine, more power into this capitalistic uh, system that we do have in order to make sure that we get these, produ these produce, these resources that we get. We look at it different places. A lot of times people say um, veganism is first world. Is veganism first world? Of course not. You go anywhere else, that's what people are eating. They're eating more of a vegan diet, right? You go around to so-called third world countries, um, rice, beans, um, that's what they're eating. Greens, different types of plants. Um, first world is where you're, you're getting filet mignon, you're getting uh, roast duck, all this other stuff, uh, everything, right? And so that's what we should be having that kind of message here, right, in the Western world, having that discussion uh, in terms of veganism, right? Uh, so in my book, I basically point that out in a very real way. And that's a hard discussion to have, even with yourself, right? Even as a vegan, I have to have that kind of discussion that, um, not only do I want to stop the harm that's coming from the animals that are not humans, I want to talk about the, uh, the animals that are humans because animals and that will include humans as well, right? How many people understand that, that we are also animals? Okay, we clear with that? All right. So it's a very difficult discussion um, to have. Um, my book is basically brought, is broken into two parts, veganism and in agricultural globalism. So in the vegan aspect, um, you can get some nutrition understanding, but of course, consult your doctor. Or I'm a certified nutritionist, uh, but consult your nutritionist um, in terms of the information that I'm giving to you in this particular book. Um, but also in terms of political sense. So we have to be more organized on that sense, on those different fronts. I'm pretty sure everybody's talked about so many different aspects of it. So I wanted to give you this kind of, this niche understanding of uh, agricultural globalism and how it intersects with veganism. As we are, they're using mules, right? They're using donkeys to move certain things around the world, right? They're pushing and they're putting 
more work on particular animals in order to actually bring those resources in different parts of the world where those, some of those parts of the world basically might not have that food to actually eat, but it comes over to the West. That's a very real, that's very real, very realistic in terms of what's happening. Uh, so I don't want to just, I don't want to start stop just at that conversation of, of, of veganism because what I found with becoming vegan, I went vegetarian and I went vegan. Somebody asked me and said, why are you not, why are you not vegan? And it made total sense. Like, why am I not vegan? I'm not drinking, you know, cow milk. You know, I'm having products with, you know, eggs and milk in it. A lot of times we, we see certain products that have eggs and milk in it. Like, why? It's unnecessary, right? And I said, oh, I just have to make a more conscious decision, right? Um, because not having that conscious decision is having, what, um, harm done to another animal, right? For no use. We just discard it like it's nothing, like nothing happened. Right, so once I get to that understanding, I also have to look at that other understanding in terms of how the system is uh, uh, created, you know, um, because the reason that happens is because those particular companies get kickbacks and subsidies and they get funding and they keep on and it's more eggs into the, it's more uh, chickens into the grinder. There's, 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 more, there's more pigs, there's more cows that's mutilated, right, uh, uh, or, uh, or squeezed. Uh, to get more milk, right? The same thing is happening to some certain parts of the world where a lot of pressure is being put on those parts of the world. Um, so uh, I bring up some of those um, nations like, like India. India had um, 250,000 suicides within 16, 16 years. And that was just for farmers. Just for farmers. So tie that in in terms of how that works. That was just for farmers. That's basically, that is GMO. That's your Monsanto. That's your Syngenta. You know, um, that's your DuPont. That's your other GMO um, company. So tie that in in a very real way. And so we can have less suffering for all animals. Does that make sense? You know, um, so that's where I'm going with that. I said, so I think sometimes we might take time to get to that understanding, just like I took time, and I am taking, you know, time to, to understand uh, more and more uh, so much. I do uh, appreciate NARD having this event uh, annual. Let's give a, give a hand, hand clap. Um, invite me, and everyone who has spoken before me that will speak after, let's give them also a, a hand, cap, hand clap. Because uh, we're speaking about so many different things and also bringing uh, arts and culture, you know, um, to the forefront as we um, speak on this particular issue uh, about protecting uh, animals. All right. I want to thank you very much um, for taking the time to listen uh, to me and my rambles. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, my website is omawale.org. Do wish me luck. I'm going for my um, two-time championship. Uh, kickboxing and on this next Saturday. Uh, so um, I'm one of the few vegan fighters. I'm trying to get all the fighters go vegan because one of the interesting things I will say, I didn't really talk about this. You know, people are gonna be interested when they read my book and they're like, this guy who fights, he doesn't talk about fighting at all in his book. You know, uh, I will say that um, fighters generally, when we fight, they eat less meat. You know what I mean? They eat less meat when they go on the train. They don't eat more meat. You know, it's like, why weigh yourself self down? Why eat more fat? Like, it doesn't make any sense. They understand that from a nutritional standpoint. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, why, make it, why, why expose yourself to more carcinogens? You know? Um, so, it's easier for me to get that message to them a lot of times. Um, especially when they see the success. Uh, so, it's very helpful. So, I try to get people to see the success of veganism. You know, show people the success of veganism. Um, and, and, you know, definitely, um, I think you got to hit them with a, so, so many different, a, a two-prong, three-prong, so many varied, you know, type of attack. You know, show them the horror. You know, show them the success, show them the, um, the greatness. You know, um, so thank you. Uh, I have my book on sale. It's $5. All right. Thank you very much.